This week on Hip Hop Now Podcast, Queen Latifah feels that some rappers have gotten soft. Chance the Rapper in the Justice League, not that Justice League, beef over an alleged unpaid beat, and hip hop and R&B rule as dominant genres in the United States. What else? Well, let's let's get get right right read these headlines. This album must be gone. This, this album must this, be gone. This, 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 this album must be gone. 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 What up, y'all? I am your host, Vegas, and this is Hip Hop Now Podcast, right here on SoundCloud.com slash Hip Hop Now Podcast. I almost said the old one. And also on Death Star Radio, DSR.FM. The app is free. You can download it today on your Apple or Android device, whichever your poison is. Or, of course, you can always go to DSR. I mean, yeah, DSR. What am I talking about? DSR, Death Star Radio. DSR.FM is the destination not only to hear this program, but to hear some uncensored hip hop. I mean, when you turn on the radio across the country, for the most part, you really only hear one form of hip hop. Yes, I consider it a form. Um, Maybe not the most flattering, but you really only hear one form of hip hop. But when you listen to an Internet radio station like Death Star Radio, It's about keeping the culture alive, about keeping the essence of what made hip-hop so great, which is lyricism and dope beats. So, DSR.FM, Death Star Radio on your Apple or Android device. And check out this show, of course, which is available on iTunes and Google Play and Stitcher Radio if you like that app. Uh, Podbean, tune in if you dig that app. and one real quick, I just want to say a little bit about podcasts, you know, in regards to podcasts. Um, a lot of people listen to podcasts. A lot of people make their own podcasts. Um, so what separates this podcast from some of the others? You know what I'm saying? And especially hip hop podcasts. Well, me personally, I decided to hone in on hip hop news and reviews. Why? Because not a lot of people have time to follow everything that's happening in hip-hop. This is not like back in the days where you had the Source magazine and it was the source of information regarding what was coming out. Now, with the internet and the fact that radio, urban radio in particular, doesn't really lean that heavy on the news side of things when it comes to movers and shakers in hip-hop, they tend to focus on more so those who are popular um, and not those who are dope, who are coming up or still making dope music, whatever it may be. So this podcast is designed to catch you up on all things hip-hop, music, and culture. And I give you my perspective on it. And my perspective is coming from a place of professionalism, which is I am not a random dude who got a mic and a headphone and an idea and said, yo, I want to do this. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. That's the beauty of the internet. That's the beauty of podcasting. But I am a radio broadcast professional. Look me up on LinkedIn. I've been doing this for over 19 years now in regards to announcing, production, script writing. You name it, I've probably done it, mostly in the space of public radio. Uh, and and little things in commercial radio and and so on and so forth. And plus, I'm a longtime hip-hop fan. First and foremost, I used to be a DJ back in the day. And I also was an MC and continued to MC and continued to DJ from time to time. So I am a well-rounded source for you to feel like whatever I say is right. Nah, I'm just joking. But you know what I'm saying? I For those who do not know me, that is my pitch to you as to why my podcast matters amongst the other podcasts you may listen to. So subscribe today. Share this podcast. If you know people who enjoy this same kind of content, let's get right into the business after my PSA. Got to do that sometimes. People don't know, man. Shout out to Hip Hop DX where I'm getting some of these stories from. But let's get right into it. Chance the Rapper and the production team, the Justice League, 
are at odds over an alleged unpaid beat. Now, you know, like I know, these things always play out in social media. This is just is how these dudes beef. This is just how it goes in hip-hop in 2017. But Justice League posted this tweet saying, of course, and I quote, of course Chance wants to save the free music business model. That's how he got on, by not paying. And not is in bold letters. Now, they also went on, what else they went on to say? The thing is, Chance the Rapper normalized the free business model. Don't pay or pay minimal for creation, post on SoundCloud, and not pay royalties. Well, they kind of went in. We're not going to read all the quotes. I think you got the gist, but this is what Chance had to say in regards to all these allegations. And I quote, this part is true, but the money I owe you, and O is in quotations, I paid to the actual producer who is suing you currently to get out of that slave deal. Hmm, interesting. Now, what I see happening here, because we know everybody treats Chance the Rapper as, um, you know, the the messiah when it comes to independent music and making it. The brother got a Grammy for a mixtape. But, just like former President Obama, but as much as we love the story, something about it is fishy. Not fishy in the sense that Barack Obama's true intentions weren't always worn on his sleeve. Same thing with Chance the Rapper. It's just sometimes people who do have motives kind of open certain doors so things can happen because they couldn't get something prior to that. Now, what is it with Chance the Rapper? I don't know. Maybe it's uh, uh, inspiration to some, but that's wrong uh, <laughs> because he's an inspiration. His album was dope last year. I liked it. It was one of my top five. Uh, but I kind of feel like it was done for a reason. Like him getting that Grammy, it was a pretty dope album, but was it the the best of the best? I, yeah and and no I don't I don't know I just kind of felt like in one hand you feel like you know things are progressing but we've seen things progress with one person as that beacon of progression and we've seen why they progressed because everything else that followed showed his hand in regards to the business and what was the real goal because the the number one thing is, you know, the record business is is doing well, but not as well as it used to when things like that happen. I mean, that's just time. But is the simple fact that, well, why Chance? You know what I'm saying? Why him? And why only him, honestly, <laughs> to right now? Because it's not like independent artists have blown up and we know they're independent. For the most part, we don't know. There was a lot of people who didn't know Chance was independent. So in regards to this whole back and forth, it seems like a little bit of the establishment battling, and I'm not considering Justice League that, but if you're going to let a dude have free beats and according to Chance, it wasn't even their beat. I'm saying, man, it's 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 all business. It's not music. And it all sucks at the end of the day. Just keep making beats. Just keep making songs. Keep your business out of the public eye. We don't care. Uh, Lauren Hill and Wyclef shot down rumors that the Fugees were doing a reunion. Funk Master Flex, who has taken several L's <laughs> in his later years, in his twilight years. Well, let me not say twilight. I don't know if the brother about to die. Uh, but he played a exclusive unreleased record from... Well, at the time, we didn't know it was unreleased. It was being said that it was new from the Fugees. And uh, Lauren Hill went, where else? Where else would she go? But she went on Twitter and had this to say, and I quote, Hey, folks, the new Fuji song is indeed an old track played around with back in the day in the lab. Not sure who leaked it, but I have my suspicions. Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill. 
uh, I kind of felt that way. I mean, there was a part of me that kind of hoped that it wouldn't. But let's let's be real when it comes to the Fugees, man. Lauren's album was dope, right? But it wasn't really a Fuji's album. Lauren's album was dope. Wyclef's first album was dope. Um, the score, undeniable hip hop classic, a successful album. But as a group, they've only had two albums, and one was Wack, and one was the score. So a reunion. I'm not one of those people who gets that hype for one, because see, when a when it was a Tribe Called Quest, right? A Tribe Called Quest had already had not only a string of hits as a, as a group, but they have they have classics. They have two two albums that I would call classics. That being the Low End Theory and um, uh, Midnight Marauders. You know what I'm saying? They have a good debut album, and nobody liked the Love Below except for three people. Facts, uh, but they have a long history as a group of being successful, whereas the Fuji's success is really in one album as a group and the rest is solo accomplishments. So a reunion album would be dope and I'd be down for it because there's no way it could be whack, at least to me. Uh, but I just, I just didn't feel like it was going to happen to be honest. And you know, if there's anybody who will tell you that it's not happening, it is Lauren Hill because of the simple fact that it seems like the reunion hasn't happened because of her. Because she either doesn't want to do it or whatever the case may be. So there you have it. No Fuji's reunion. Funk Master Flex flops again. Flex, fall back, man. Just fall back, please. Mike DeLorean shed some light on why the Prodigy mural in uh, Queensbridge will probably never exist. And uh, if you listen to my podcast last week, soundcloud.com slash hip hop now podcast, he just had, you know, I, I mean, I, I basically said it. And there were just, there are people in that hood that don't like him. Enough people that don't like him, I guess, or certain people who don't like him who may have a certain influence in a neighborhood where others wouldn't do anything. And, um, you know, it's sad because, you know, the dude's not here anymore. You know, it's whatever, whatever beefs you had, you know, not that you have to praise him. But honestly, you can you can move on, you know, you can move on. And unfortunately, that mural's not there. You would think. It would be able to, um, you know, hang in, in Queensbridge. You know, as much as MC Shan, Marley Maul, and Nas did for Queensbridge, Mob Deep is a big part of that as well, including Prodigy, who's not originally from Queensbridge. But, I mean, you couldn't tell us that. We knew he was from Hempstead, but it was like we refused to believe that. Like, whatever, he's from, he's from QB. So it's just sad when you think about it, but it is what it is. Jay-Z finally grabs the top spot on the Billboard 200 charts with his album, Jay-Z, uh, well, 444, I should say. Remember, <laughs> how do you have this album that goes platinum in damn near a week? And it wasn't on the top of the charts last week. I, I don't understand how that works, but... Good to see that it, you know, it it got where it was supposed to be, I guess. I like the album. You know, some people don't. I like it. It doesn't it doesn't matter, you know, uh how close to old Jay-Z it is or whether he's being the most lyrical ever. I like the fact that it was a personal album from Jay-Z. That was a long time coming. This is the thirteenth album, and this is the first time he decided to make an entire album dedicated to personal stories and perspectives from him and not just braggadocious rhymes. I liked it, okay? There, there you have it. Diggable Planets, Butterfly from the group, never tires of performing Rebirth of Slick. If you know, like I know, certain artists who have hits, you would assume get tired of performing some of those records, right? 
And especially if your biggest hit is really kind of like your only hit. And I know, don't come for me, I know, you know, the true school, I know that you know a number of songs, but guess what? You're looking at it in a box, right? Because Rebirth of Slick, cool like that, for those that don't remember, Rebirth of Slick was beyond just a hip-hop hit. It was kind of more of a cultural, I, I hate to use the word pop, but it's, it's a bigger hit than just a hip-hop song that's a hit for hip-hop fans. It's much bigger than that. So when you do a show, like me and you going to a Diggable Planet show in 2017, ask me why I would do that, but I'm just saying, I'm creating a scene. <laughs> we go to the show, right? I'm not very familiar with their catalog because I wasn't the biggest fan, to be honest, even back then. I don't wear rose-colored old head glasses i know how i felt back then i know how i feel now i wasn't the biggest fan right but let's say you were so you have a number of songs you're looking forward to hearing you know what i'm saying you can't wait somebody like me is like hey yo do cool like that and then i'm ready to bounce i'm not a casual hip-hop fan at all but a casual fan would also sit there in the crowd and say the same exact thing as me. Like, yo, when are they going to do the song that I even know their name from? If you know their name. You may know the song and not them. Uh, but here's a couple of quotes from them uh, in regards to that. I guess some people might get tired of the song, but every minute of a performance is an opportunity. You're participating in a spiritual ceremony this is i think butler said this who said this i can't remember uh yeah yeah butterfly said this uh whose name is his last name is butler ishmael butterfly butler all right uh but i i can dig that you know what i'm saying because also what you got to think about is the fact that when people have uh hit records or they're considered like one hit wonders because honestly in the grand scheme of things they would be considered that they really have that one record that that was huge for them and that's it um it's an opportunity people are there for cool like that but it's an opportunity for you to introduce them not only to the other records you did that you thought were dope that you happen to be performing but the simple fact that you're introducing them also to your new material and sometimes when you come to a show just because you want to hear that one or two or three records that you love and then you realize you actually like everything they performed what do you do you go on apple music or spotify or title if you use that uh or whatever and you go and listen you know what i'm saying in some cases, the real true fans uh, will, or supporters of hip-hop music get impressed at a show and hear different records besides the one big hit and say, I'm going to go buy the entire catalog because that was a hell of a show. So I completely agree with Butterfly when it comes to everything being a spiritual place I re in regards to performing in front of people and an opportunity for you to gain new fans and convince fans like me that back then I was worth or they were worth my time and maybe I should go and revisit it you know what I'm saying they should kind of pay me for that because I'm I'm honestly pitching something that a lot of people know but they don't really comprehend because it's more like, I don't like that record. I like this record. I don't like that record. And that's kind of the end of it. But I could dig that. Am I going now to go listen to a bunch of diggable planets? Probably not. Maybe at some point, maybe when I'm in the gym, you know, I give it one of those gym listens. Cause honestly, I do not remember nothing but cool like that, to be honest. Uh, so <laughs> we'll see. Havoc is still in disbelief over Prodigy's death. Uh, he said this in an interview, and I quote, I got news that I never would have expected ever in my life. I just knew that it was a lie. It was a rumor. 
I had heard rumors about myself, about P, about other dudes, and they never have been true. Especially my homeboy, my dude, that he's dead. And I just had a progress report on him the night before that uh, he was good. He's walking around, he's joking, he's eating food, and somebody going to say that he passed away like that. I knew it was a lie, but when I came to the realization that it wasn't a lie, it it effed me up. I was pinching myself literally. It had to be a dream. That to me, and I know in our in our country, there's, there's a thing that we tend to ignore. It's called mental illness. I'm not saying Havoc has mental illness, right? But I'm saying that this experience and what he's saying right here tells me that he may just want to sit down with a therapist just to get him through it. Because obviously we all deal with death and some people got over Prodigy's death the next day after they listened to a ton of albums and stuff like that. But for some people, it, it sticks with them. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to shake, and it begins to affect their life, the lives of people around them, their work. And for Havoc, you know, as a part of a group, as as much as I liked Havoc as a solo artist, it's something to say when you know a Mob Deep album is coming out. Havoc and P, Havoc and Prodigy. As much as I like some of what Prodigy did solo, it's nothing like knowing a Mob Deep album is coming out. So it's crazy to think about the fact that now he has to deal with the whole idea of, for one, how am I going to get money? Because he probably made the most money, got the most opportunities when he performed as Mob Deep. Now you can't do that. He's a producer, so he's he's good in some regards. Um, and who knows, maybe his solo career will um, be propelled as a result of people kind of feeling bad because every time they see Havoc now, they're going to know that Prodigy is not here anymore. So hopefully he can get through this situation. Um, my advice would definitely be to, you know, just, just talk to someone. And him talking and interviews and all that, helps also uh but it's important man because a lot of people figure they could you know drown their sorrows in alcohol or women or or some even your music in some regards and it's cool but it's better if you talk about it it's better if you talk to people about it all right it's it's enough advice for me you know what i'm saying quick note here pimp c's wife tells young thug to watch his mouth (laughs) and She said this, and I quote, he's not here, referring to Pimp C, he's not here to have that conversation with you, but I am. Now, let me see what Young Thug actually said. Uh, Let me see. Well, here's another quote from Pimp C's wife in regards to uh, what was said on the song. Trill Talk Tuesday, people. I just checked out a song by Chance the Rapper and Young Thug. I'm feeling a certain kind of way about Young Thug's verse. He mentioned Chad, a.k.a. Pimp C, and said something like, Pimp C, I ain't doing that, or he disagreed with it or whatever. What is she talking about? All right. She also went on to say, my thing is, if Chad was alive, you wouldn't mention him in that song the way you did, so don't do it now. Watch your mouth. He's not here to have that conversation with you, but I am. Uh, I, I I don't know. What what did, let's see, what did he say? Young Thug's recent collaboral with Chance the Rapper, he said this, Pimp C, I ain't doing that. I'm a F her on the streets, on the sheets. Yeah, and all my N-words, because this is a family podcast, loyal like Bum B, hold on. And this was a reference to this uh, Pimp C line from 2007. Uh, which was basically the same thing. He turned it around. I, I don't, I don't see the problem with what Young Thug said. Let, first of all, let's just get out the way. It was, it was whack anyway, right? I'm pretty sure the Pimp C version may be a little bit better. 
Uh, but it wasn't a big deal as far as uh, a reason to even put it in your rhymes. And anytime somebody takes, this is my opinion, but anytime somebody takes a verse from a, a older rapper or whatever, it's kind of paying homage to them. And maybe she kind of took it the wrong way because uh, for him to even quote it, it wasn't like, well, what Pimp C said was whack. I'm going to do this. He was just playing on, you know, what Pimp C said in his original version, which is not really worth reading any more of this because it's nonsense. And Hip Hop DX, why are you posting this? Uh, <laughs> Kanye West is reportedly armed with a, resp a response to Jay-Z's 444 jabs. Is anybody surprised? That's what I want to know. Is anybody surprised by this? You know, you knew that Jay-Z, I mean not Jay-Z, but Kanye West was going to have something to say. He always has something to say. Why wouldn't he respond to Jay-Z taking jabs at him? Why would he not? Why would he do that? We know Kanye. He cannot go without, you know, uh, not being the center of attention for one. Uh, but also, more importantly, it's Kanye West, man. No way. Big brother going at you. Queen Latifah thinks some rappers have gone soft. She said in an interview with Hot 97, and I quote, I feel like a lot of rappers, they lost their balls. They got soft. When things are going on in the world, like with Trump or elections, this was the stuff we rap artists chewed on. Preach. She also went on to say that women should have unity in hip hop, but she was down for the whole battle between Remy Ma and Nicki Minaj. Um, to her first point about, you know, rappers going soft, I I agree. I think a lot of the, the voices, and not all, because she said some, but I agree. I think a lot of the voices who are up front tend to not speak on these issues because they're so busy trying to get as rich as possible that they don't want to do anything to jeopardize that. And as much as you may hear about, you know, um, people not liking Donald Trump or, or whoever, it's they're not really concerned. And in some cases, some of these major artists aren't sophisticated enough to have an opinion on it to be honest. And who's to say they don't have those records and they were complete garbage, so people just was like, nah. Imagine Future making a record, uh, I guess a positive record or whatever. Not saying he can't. Not saying it wouldn't be good. Uh, but when you've basically created a culture of fiends <laughs> through your music, it's one other thing to, to say that. And lastly... Hip-hop and R&B reign supreme for the first time in Nielsen music history. For the first time in over 40 years, and you would think it would have been sooner. According to Forbes, hip-hop and R&B together account for 25.1% of all music consumption in the U.S., while rock claims 23%. The combining of the two genres makes sense as they intertwine to a degree that often makes them difficult to separate, which angers us hip-hop fans. But beyond that point, that's quite obvious. Hip-hop, whether you like trap music or not, hip-hop is everywhere. It's on the radio. It's on your commercials. It's in some of your television shows that you like. And I'm not just talking about reality TV. It's it's literally everywhere. Uh, the only th issue I would have is it's hard to identify everything as hip hop. And it's kind of looking like the machine one. Go listen to some old music. You'll see what I'm talking about. Old hip hop. See what they thought about R&B and New Jack Swing. That's going to do it for me for this week. You can follow me on social media at Vegas World INC and check out this podcast, which is available on everything. iTunes, Google Play, whatever your bag is. But also the home, soundcloud.com slash hip hop now podcast. And right here on Death Star Radio, D 
dsr.fm. Until next week, y'all, I am not a critic. I'm a fan. Peace. Drop, dropping on the random. <laughs>